will significantly decrease and it's not very good for you, first of all. OK, could you see that I start uh, recording? Yeah. yeah. OK. Let's return. Let's, 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 let's. Please uh, switch off your microphone. OK. Uh, also, our methods are based on synthesis of economic theory, economic measurements, statistics, of course, and kinematic. Uh, we will use some ideas from the probability theory, from maths, uh, and we will discuss next time, for example, some key points from probability theory that could be very useful for us. And empirical research, empirical research. Uh, first of all, I need to motivate you. Uh, at the end of this course, why do we start the first lecture with the empirical research? Because at the end of this course, you need to conduct your own empirical research. So because of this, all that we discussed right now will be very important and will be very useful for you. Unless during this course, so please uh, don't skip anything and uh, if you have any questions, please ask me. Or you can, it's better to ask me because I didn't um, see our chat. OK, so. A project, empirical project should be an applied study, including empirical part if we work with the quantitative me uh, methods and if we analyze quantitative data. And it's very pity uh, when we notice that students use uh, maybe postulate a very interesting research question. Maybe uh, the student has a real good literature review and interesting hypothesis. But in the main part of his or her research, he skip very important um, things and didn't analyze data uh, correctly. So phrases like I didn't do the math, but I suppose that or it's obvious that or I didn't check, but I'm sure uh, these phrases don't work when we use data and when we work with the data. Uh, these phrases are not prohibited, but they are very bad for you. And uh, these examples, these phrase examples from the student defenses, not only from our course, uh, but most from the student thesis uh, at the end of third year student or other students. So first of all, you need to make sure that the, your research question, the question that you pose, is actually answered in the body of the work. This is very important. And typically, your research question in empirical project should answer the question why. So you need to prove that this research question is really um, interesting and um, relevant for these days. Uh, also, the project starts from a problem, because if you don't see any problems, why should we do and provide this kind of research? Yes. And this problem might or might not be clearly observable. And it may be seem obvious, but it was emphasizing that the first step in any research is the key for formulation of the question of interest. This is one of the first point. And the problem poses a research question that doesn't have a trivial answer or straightforward explanation. So there are some ways how can you pose uh, a research question 
if we talk about the original research. For example, you can find new issues. You may pose um, this type of question, for example, when you recognize emerging issues. Maybe even these issues existed before, but you can say that these issues have gained importance right now and prove why. One more uh, approach, you can use new data. And this is really a very interesting approach because you can um, find more details and there are empirical issues that have not been examined empirically uh, because appropriate data were not available before. So when you come across a newly available data, and this data should be with high quality, you can say, for example, that I use available data set and I enable to overcome limitations in previous studies. I can I have more details on some topic with this new data. One more approach, you can use new methods or you can, for example, borrow some methods from other, um, from other science and use uh, these methods in your research, on your research topic. So you can find some advanced methods and apply them or for example, you can find more appropriate method. Um, and one more approach, uh, you can use different or change environment. For example, for the last two years, many of the business processes, many of the economics processes uh, were affected by COVID-19, yes, by uh, this pandemic situation. And you know that there are a lot of changes in marketing, for example, in business, uh, in online trading because of this, as well as in our social sphere and so on. So the environment is changed and you can conduct um, research about this. So you can use, for example, the same method, the same research question in general, but you can check how now, uh, now how it works in new environments, in new circumstances. Or one more example as students, uh, especially students from second or third year students, uh, always can adopt or can borrow some research questions from other countries, yeah, and check uh, the same research question, but using other samples, for example, Russian sample, Russian companies. This is also a good method and you can change this way. Uh, you can choose this way in your research when you will choose um, a research topic, a research question. But anyway, you should remember when you start your empirical research that no investigation is possible if you don't have appropriate data. Again, you can find, not find, you can create very interesting research question, very interesting. Uh, nobody before uh, answered this question, but First of all, you should check, could you find appropriate data? Because good data or good microdata equals good research. And um, you can collect data yourself, for example, in some um, projects, not in our, or you can use uh, data from secondary data sources. But anyway, you should think very carefully if you will be able to answer 
your research question with the data that you find, with the data that you collect. If not, it's uh, very important to maybe provide more search for different data or, to, or in other way, you should change your research question because research question without the data is nothing. Uh, and they should be relevant to each other, yeah? Research question and data should be relevant. Otherwise, after many months and a lot of efforts, you can mm, told by your teachers or your advisors that unfortunately uh, you have very interesting project, but you can't answer your research question with this data or you can't answer your research question with such uh, methods that you used in your empirical part. Also, mm, you know that in our modern world, uh, a lot of data that presented us indices. So you should be very careful to work with such kind of data and to work with indicators indices, because um, you must understand what your index is made of and how this index was uh, constructed. Just a second. Um, so you should understand uh, maybe, maybe if you don't understand uh, how your index was constructed, you can incorporate or you can include a similar data or similar indicators into your model. And of course, this will be a real mistake. The next point, you should read the information about database very carefully. There are a lot of data and more and more data becoming available in the internet, from internet, and this is good news for us but you should understand the quality of this uh, data and of course you first need to understand what you get so it's dangerous to use data without a full knowledge of how the data uh, were collected and how the data was coded and arranged because of this uh, when you find some data Please read code books and read questionnaires, read some general information about this database. Um, be sure that you don't have any um, wrong ideas about this data set. Also, when you consider using a data set, you need to understand the following. You need to understand observation unit, an object on which a measurement is taken. For example, observation unit is an individual, a household, a company, a, I don't know, country, region, and so on. This is our observation unit. And when we uh, run some models, when we interpret our results, every time we need to think about uh, what is our who is our observation unit, yes? For whom uh, we interpret this result, what is the effect? Also, you should understand target population. So in the, uh, this is the complete collection of observations we want to study. You should remember this from the statistic course. And also you should remember that it's very hard and in most cases it's absolutely impossible to work with the population. And because of this we work only with the sample. A sample is a subset of population. So also you should remember about the sample population and the sample population is a uh, population from which the sample was taken. So you should clearly understand um, how your sample was 
designed and collected. Next topic uh, about the empirical research is uh, this is some stages. So traditional econometric methodology proceeds along the following lines. First of all, of course, we use statement or theory uh, when we formulate our hypothesis, when we formulate our research questions, we need to conduct some literature review. And the most common way, how can we do this? We can read some papers, yes, we can read some books uh, with the theory. We can find some results from previous studies uh, and read them, of course, because in many cases, and for students, I should say, in most, in all cases, it turns out that you are not the only one who needs to conduct this economic or management analysis. Uh, every time you can find other people's uh, results and efforts uh, that provide some relevant research for you. And next stage, you should specify some mathematical model of this theory. A model is simply a set of mathematical equations single or multiple equation. And again, it all begins with the theory. Uh, the theory that's relevant for your field, because you need to understand how variables are related to one uh, another. And when we want to understand the relationship in language of maths, we can express our ideas about the relationship between variables using the mathematical concept of a function. For example, let's say that we have a consumption and we have an income. And we can write uh, that, the cons uh, that the level of consumption is some function of income, according to the uh, theory. And after you write the uh, mathematical model, you should specify statistical or econometric model. What is the difference between two of them? What is the difference between econometric model and mathematical model? Uh, generally speaking, we can say that the purely um, math model assumes exact or let's say deterministic relationship between consumption and income. But in real world, we understand that anyway, we have a lot of different factors that can influence our consumption, not only income, of course, yeah? And anyway, we have some error term, some random or let's say stochastic variable that could be defined or could be not defined. We every time we have some probability, yeah, probabilistic properties. And economic economic theory doesn't claim to be able to predict specific behavior of one individual, for example, or one household. All that we can do we can predict only some general or on average things. We can say, for example, uh, we can describe some average or let's say systematic behavior of many individuals or many firms. Uh, because of this, we use sample. And because of this, when we will interpret our results, we will say that on average, we think that uh, this factor influence on that on other factor like this. So on average and uh, probability theory will play a really huge role in our 
research. And next, after your state the theory, uh, specify the models, you should uh, start to work with the data. Of course, you should obtain, uh, because this will be your first project, uh, first of all, you should check, do you have uh, the appropriate data? And this point, it's better to do at the same time with this point. So, I think that I will provide you with more details uh, how you should run your research project. But for now, let's keep uh, these sequences, but please remember that for the first time when you work with the new research uh, question, with a new theory, please do this at the same time. So find the research question and at the same time check could you find the relevant or appropriate data, okay? But generally speaking, after you specify a model, you can work with uh, obtaining data. You can start uh, to work with this data. So you should find the data that will enable you to find answers on your research question. For example, if you are interested in some individual behavior, you should find individual level data. And it's easy to say. Sometimes it's very complicated and um, this is not easy task to find the relevant data. Uh, especially, for example, level on the individual uh, on the individual level. Uh, in this case, you can change, for example, your research question, or you can try to find maybe um, aggregated data and uh, a little bit change your research question. But anyway, your data should be appropriate and relevant to your research question. After you find and check the data, you can estimate the parameters of econometric models and uh, the actual mechanism and the actual techniques of estimating such kind of parameters will be discussed later. We have all our course for doing this. Uh, but generally speaking, for now, you can remember that we will use regression analysis. And regression analysis is the main tool used to obtain such kind of estimates. Of course, we before we run our regression analysis, we will test our hypothesis with uh, tests that you have already know from statistics. Uh, you can run correlation analysis, you can run t-tests, ANOVA, and so on. We will do all of this before econometric um, and before the regression analysis. After this, you should use hypothesis tests, uh, hypothesis testing. What does it mean? In the context of regression analysis, it means that you need to check whether your estimates from your econometric models up to, uh, are in accordance with the expectations of the theory that is being tested. So, in other words, um, you should check if your estimates from your models are statistically significant. For these purposes, we will use um, confidence intervals, we will use different tests after we run our regression models. And such confirmation on the basis of sample evidence is based on the statistical inference branch. And 
when you prove that your estimates are statistically significant, you can use them for forecasting or for prediction purposes. Uh, in this case, you can say that variable y, for example, uh, on the basis of expected values of the explanatory variable x, will, uh, you can predict uh, this value of this dependent variable. And you can answer on the question by how much your dependent variable variable y will be changed if you manipulate or if you change your x, your second variable. And of course, the last but not least point, why you need to run this empirical research, because your original research um, should be used in for control purposes or for policy purposes and this is really very important and you need to find the answers to your research questions and you need to convince people that you have reliable results um, <clears throat> and we will discuss how can you do this so let's do a little practice. For example, um, we would look, we would like to examine the effects of job training on worker productivity. And one of the first step, let's say that we have already find uh, we have find relevant data, and we need to formulate the research question. How can we do this? How can you formulate the research question if you need to check the relationship between the job training and worker productivity? Any suggestions? Do you have any ideas? Does job, job training affect worker productivity? OK, this is good. You can. You can be more specific, not only affect, but you can suggest a positive or negative relationship, for example, of this effect. OK, now, is it true that job training increases work productivity? OK, Arsenio, this is really good. So we can formulate our research question in the following way. Do a job training increase labor productivity? And we want to Sorry, and we want to examine the effects of job training on worker productivity. But next step, we need to think. OK, job training is obvious. How can we measure this? Um, but how can we measure labor productivity? Which indicator should we use? For example, could we use wage or maybe wage per hour? or maybe some other indicators or in uh, language of econometrics and statistics proxies. Maybe we could use wage as a proxy for labor productivity. And in this case, we can a little bit um, add more details in our research question. And in this case, we can test our hypothesis. So our main hypothesis for this research will be do a job training increase wages. What is the difference between these two 
this is our research question and this is our uh, hypothesis that we will be test. Here uh, we formulate our research question in general, let's say in general words. And in this case, we have already find proxies for our indicators um, training and for labor productivity. So we will use wages at the proxy for productivity. And if we translate uh, this hypothesis and this research question in the language of maths and in the language of functions, we can write this as follows. We can write that wage, our proxy for labor productivity, is a function of training. Yes? So, in other words, our dependent variable is now wage. This is our dependent variable. And our variable of interest, this is maybe a new definition for you, uh, but our variable of interest is training. And we want to know how training, how um, attending of, attendance of training influence or our wage. More precisely, we want to answer on the question by how much our wage will be higher or increase if, for example, we attend some um, professional trainings. But of course, we again, let's see uh, this function. We are understand that in the real world, not only training can influence our wage. There are a lot of different factors that can influence uh, the level or the value of your wage. Yes. And in this case, we can ask. Uh, we can ask for yourself one more question. What are the other factors that can affect wages? And it could be obvious for you that, for example, gender, yeah, uh, there is expected in many countries that, for example, males uh, could have a higher wage than women's, holding all other factors fixed. You can find a lot of research on this topic and find this relationship and find the statistically significant difference between males and females uh, in wages. Also, age can influence, uh, can affect the level of wage. Education, of course, yes. And of course, your working experience uh, can affect the value of wage in general, yes? So all these variables, all these variables, gender, age, education, experience, these variables are our controls. What does it mean? So we need to add them because these uh, variables, these factors, in other words, also affect uh, the value of the wage. In our case, hourly wage, for example. Does it make sense? Do you understand the uh, idea? Yeah. OK, so maybe you have already discussed the regression analysis during the statistic course. Maybe I, I don't know something. Do you? No, I don't think that makes sense. Okay. So this is a new topic for you. Okay. Thank you, Georgi. Yeah. Um, next, types of data. What types of data do you know? Uh, of course, I think that you understand the difference between the micro data and macro data. In our course, we will work with the micro data. 
So micro data uh, collected on individual economic decision making units such as individuals, household, firms, uh, and so on. Macro data, macro data resulting from a pooling or aggregating or individuals, household or firms at the local, state or national levels. Um, I should clarify my first phrase that uh, during this course we will work with the micro data. Of course not, uh, we will use also macro data, but in most cases, in most cases, we will use with the micro data because there are different branches of econometrics. Uh, we have microeconometrics and we have macroeconometrics. And microeconometrics uh, is mostly works with individuals, household firms, sometimes countries, and macro data uh, used mostly in macroeconometrics. So, uh, also, you should see the difference between the flow data and stock data. Flow, uh, I can remind you that flow data is outcome that measures over. I please switch off your microphone. Uh, flow data outcome that measures over a period of time, such as the consumption, for example, during the uh, some, let's say, quarter or months of some year. Stock data um, outcome measured at a particular point in time. For example, you can read here uh, the asset value of some bank on September 7, uh, previous year. So, in econometrics, as well as in other courses, uh, we can divide all types of data in three main groups. The first group, this is cross-section data. The second group is panel data. And the last group is time series. So let's a little bit uh, discuss all of these uh, groups. So the first, this is cross-sectional data. And a cross-sectional data consists of a sample, individuals, households, firms, maybe cities, countries, doesn't matter. But one main feature that this data were collected at a given point in time. Um, of course, it doesn't mean exactly that you collect and you survey all the households at the same day or even at the same month. Sometimes, and very often, when we have a sample of, of let's say, uh, 10,000 of individuals or 10,000 of firms, it's very difficult to collect all the data, uh, to collect data, I mean, from questionnaires, for example, uh, original data, yeah, on all units to precisely the same time period. For example, some firms may be served during different weeks within a year, or maybe even div different months within the same year. So in the pure cross-sectional analysis, we would ignore any minor timing differences in collecting the data. For example, if a set of firms uh, were surveyed during different months or different weeks or different days in the same year, we would still view this as a cross-sectional data set. The second important feature of the cross-sectional data uh, that this data should be a random sample. And if the data is not a random sample, we have a sample selection problem. 
or we can obtain some unwanted effects if unwanted effects in our let's say regression models or when you test some hypothesis your results your conclusions could be wrong if your sample is not a random sample and of course sometimes random sampling is not appropriate for example uh, we are interested in studying factors that influence the family wealth and uh, it's known that people individuals or households in many cases might refuse to report their wealth so for example it's expected, yes, that you don't want to answer on the question how uh, much was your income in the previous month? This is not a very pleasant question and this is a very personal question for some people. And because of this, they can't refuse to answer this question. Especially uh, there is a trend, for example, if uh, you find among the wealthier families, among the richer families, are less likely to disclose, to report their wealth. And in this case, your sample could be biased and your sample is not random from the population of all families because you have, you don't have enough rich families in your sample in this case because they refuse to answer. They don't want to speak with you. And the next type of data is panel data. The difference between the panel data and with the cross-sectional data that you have several uh, periods. And a panel or longitudinal data, this are two common definitions, panel or longitudinal. Also, we can say cross-sectional time series data, but it's not so popular. <clears throat> so this data set consists of a time series for each cross-sectional member in the data set. So example, suppose Let's continue the same example with the wage. Uh, you collect a data set of some individuals with the wage, maybe with the age education, uh, with the age education, gender, employment history, doesn't matter, uh, in one year. At the second year, when you collect your data, you come um, to absolutely the same individuals. So panel data is a data set of individuals, for example, followed over, a, let's say, five year period or 10 year period. So we collect information, information using absolutely the same cross-sectional units. So you include every year or every period, uh, not a year, maybe months, the same individuals, the same firms, or the same, let's say, regions. So the units should be the same. And uh, the last uh, type, of data is time series. So if I, let's start with the examples. For example, money supply or stock prices, or let's say um, iPhone's sales figures or consumer price index. All of these are the example of time series data. If you collect this data for, for example, for, for years, for months, for maybe days, 
And in this case, uh, time series is a sequence. For example, if you want to visualize um, time series data, let's say you have a GDP per capita of some country, and you want to construct a graph. So you will construct a kind of line, maybe some trend uh, on this graph. And you can see that this is time series. This is the sequence taken as successive equally space points in time. For example, GDP for each year for over over, let's say 20 years. And it's a sequence of discrete time data. Because of this, it's expected that these data are non-random. And this is one of the main feature of time series data. And because of this, time series could be more difficult to analyze than transactional data, for example, or even sometimes for panel data. It will be a little bit more difficult to analyze. And because of this, um, we can rarely assume that economic or business observations are independent across the time in time series data sets. For example, yeah, uh, let's imagine situation, very easy situation that you know the um, value of GDP from the last quarter. And you can you should understand that the information from the of GDP from the last quarter tells you um, quite a bit about the likely range of GDP during the current quarter or during the future quarter, yeah? Because GDP per capita tends to remain fairly stable from one quarter to the next. Even fairly stable from one year to another year. And because of this, again, remember that data are non-random and it could be very problematic to work with the models in time series data analysis. Uh, when in your models you observe a, a trend or seasonality. In this case, you should use specific techniques to eliminate this trend. OK. So now some general words about the regression analysis. We will start to discuss in regression analysis in details in a week. So next lecture, we will discuss about the probability theory. Uh, our first lecture's introduction, we discuss some general things about uh, empirical research and econometrics and some things about our course. And regression analysis, for now, you should understand like a uh, specific technique uh, that concerned with the study of dependence of one variable, the dependent variable. You have already heard today this definition. And one more or other variables that we can say this explanatory variables. And we want to estimate or we want to predict, let's say, population mean or average value in terms of the known or fixed values of the latter. So we use our sample or we use several samples to predict some effect on one variable and to make conclusion about the population. So if we finalize our example about the wage and training, here again, yeah, wage is our dependent variable, training is our independent variable, as we discussed previously, and uh, gender age education experience will be our control variables. So now let's 
take a look at the course plan. Now we are here. This is our only zero step or let's say first step uh, in this course. Next week uh, we are review of probability. And during the seminars you will solve uh, some tasks. On this topic. And since the third lecture, uh, we will start talking about the uh, regression models, uh, about the assumption of these regression models, and how can we use them um, properly. So uh, we finalize our course with the binary dependent variables. And uh, our working software will be Stata. I know that you have already used this software during your as minimum statistic course. Maybe also you use this software in some other courses. Uh, you can communicate uh, with us through the Microsoft Teams, for example. You can write um, for me and for other teachers personal messages from Microsoft Teams. As well as you can use, uh, and it's better to use in some situations, official HC email. So if you want to uh, write me or other teachers a letter, please use HC mail, not your personal Gmails or Yandex or Yahoo or something like this, only HC, okay? Uh, Please find, first of all, our basic textbook. This is Stock and Watson, Introduction to Econometrics. You can find this book online. Uh, next slide, you will see the instruction. How can you do this? And additional book uh, where we will, maybe you, you will read some topics uh, from Woodridge. Um, we have this book in English, of course, in our library. You can find this book in our library. As well as I, I can think that you can find this book, maybe online version of this book in the Internet. And if you want to learn more about this data, please find uh, Baum, Econometrics using Stata offline, offline. And Atkins and Hill, we also have in our uh, library this book. And if you need to, if you have some questions about how this data works or some comments in data works, you can find um, a very good official YouTube channel of data. They have short videos, no more than five minutes, no more than three minutes, with some um, general basic comments and with some explanation. How can you run this comment? Maybe sometimes not how can you interpret this more comment, but anyway, how can you interpret? We can discuss during our seminars or you can ask the teachers, ask teachers how to do this. So this is instruction. How can you find uh, electronic version of the book? I can think that I you can do it by yourself. Uh, I will upload the slides of this lecture today, so you would find all these slides and this instruction. Instruction. So now let's talk about the grading of our course. Uh, Maybe you have already checked the program, uh, the syllabus of this course. The syllabus is officially uh, provided on the web page of our course Econometrics 1. But anyway, I want to show you that we have home assignments, no more than five home assignments during the two models during the whole course. Uh, we have Test one. This test will be more about the theory and some outputs from the data. You need to interpret some outputs. Um, this test 
is expected at the end of this module. Maybe, 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 let me check. Maybe after the um, fifth or maybe after the sixth lecture will be the first test. But anyway, I will send you a message between before this test so you will know the exact data. Uh, also, we have uh, one more test and they are close to the end of this course. And this test will be only on the state outputs. And uh, what is more important, during this course you need to um, conduct a research project. Okay, let's let me share. Let me share one more things. Just a second. Uh, could you see a PDF file? Yes. yes. Okay, maybe <clears throat> again, I will upload this file today in the evening, uh, the first part of this file. So here you can find the general information about the research project. So research project is conducted in groups. And you should uh, find and form uh, groups no more than seven people and no less than five people. How can you form this group? It's up to you. We are not, uh, we don't have any rules. Should you be from one um, group, academic group, I mean, yeah. Should you have the similar grades for previous courses? Or it's up to you. So students who cannot find a group for themselves will be assigned the existing group by the teacher or we can form a new group for all the students that cannot find their own group. And of course, each student must be only in one project group, only in one. And you have you will have several deadlines. The first deadline will be in more than three weeks. Will be uh, the second of February. This is deadline for group formation. So official deadline. Uh, the registration is open till 7 p.m. of uh, the second of February. At this stage. You only need to form the project group, and that's all. Uh, of course, it means that you also need to find a group leader. That could be only one person. A group leader could be one person. You should decide within your group who it will be. Uh, the role of group leader is communication. Communication with us, with teachers, and within the groups. So the group leader should organize all communication within the group and with us. After this, there will be the second deadline when you sh when you need to find and formulate your research question. And again, you have. Uh, how many times? More than. More than more than. More than two, uh, more than two weeks. You have three weeks for this stage. OK. Uh, before the each stage. I will send you um, messages and I will send you letters with the details. Sorry, sorry, just a second. Okay, I'm back. So, <clears throat> do you have any questions right now? I have a question about our seminar. So, I don't know my day on the such problem, but it's so I don't see. 
three classes. Maybe you know at what days, <laughs> on what days will we have. Again, Inna, could you repeat your question because the sound was not very good, please? Uh, <clears throat> I mean that in our schedule I don't see any classes and uh, of seminars, I mean, and maybe you know when will we have uh, such Yes, classes. on Monday and Fridays. You can check next week. You don't have any seminars on this week. You will have them since next week. And uh, did you check your personal schedule or you check your group schedule? Because I heard that you have problems with the group schedules. So please check your individual uh, schedule. Yes, OK. OK, you. if you if you still uh, can see your seminars in the schedule, please let me know. I will write to the study office and say that we have a problem. OK. Please let me know to you the end of this week, because um, some of the groups, two groups, uh, will have uh, the first seminars on next Monday. And other four groups uh, will have seminars on next Friday. So we need to check that everything is correct and that you don't have any problems or you have or you don't have any miscommunication. So let me show you one more thing. Uh, the thing concerns the first part. The first stage. So when you this, uh, when you organize your group, please find in our. You can see my screen here. Yeah? Uh, in our general channel. Where is this? OK. In our general channel, you can see files. Yeah. And in the among these files, you can see Excel file project teams. So here in this Excel file on the second page, you should write. Yeah, I see someone. Evgeny is already here. Absolutely right. So here in the first column, you should write the first and the last name of all your group members. Here uh, you should write the group number of all of the students. Uh, and in the last call, you should write only one email, HSC email of the group leader because we will uh, communicate only with the group leaders and all the questions will be only with the group leaders. So on the first page, you can see an example. This is an example. How could you fill this form? Uh, this is some abstract students. Uh, but you should feel here. OK, and after this, please write me a message or write me a letter uh, that you from your group and uh, I will answer that. OK, I see your group. OK, this, everything is uh, good. Everything is nice and I will form my own list of groups that in this list of groups will not be changed. OK, again, do you have any questions uh, about our course? Maybe I need to provide more details or something. I have a little question about what you said right now. You mean after we fill in the Google form, we should <laughs> leader should send you a yeah. letter? Yeah. Just to yeah. notify you about the group. Yeah, I, I need to f uh, get a letter because sometimes uh, when we have uh, common documents, sometimes could be some mistakes or other students could delete something. And because of this, um, I need, let's say, a proof that the list here is absolutely right and you will not change your team. OK, maybe you write here. Before the deadline, but next day you decided to change something in your group. For example, to change one student by another student. Uh, and I will not understand if this will be a last version or not. Because of this, because of to avoid any mistakes, 
I need your confirmation, your last confirmation from the letter or from the message in Microsoft Teams, and you will see my answer that, okay, I will see it, okay? Okay, so the letter is like the final... The letter is a final confirmation. Okay. Uh, before I get your letter, you can change something in this file, but only in your group, not in the <laughs> other groups. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All participants of the group have to be from the same academic. No, as you wish. It's up to you, Eric. You can uh, find, for example, not only from your academic group. This is this doesn't matter for us. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? If you don't have any other questions, we can stop here and see uh, see you next week. Sorry, I mm -hmm. just checked the my personal uh, schedule and uh, I have no classes, uh, economic, economic classes on Monday, like for, and on Friday and on Friday also. Yes. OK, um, please, the first step. Um, write the letter to study office and then let me know about the answer. If they don't answer something for you, I will uh, write general letter from all groups, okay? Arina. Okay, okay, okay. thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There if is no... I have the same, mm -hmm. me, if I have the same trouble, I need to write to our study office or not? Uh, you can write one letter from uh, several students okay, okay and also way. you can um, add me in a copy of this letter maybe it will be more uh, productive if you add me in the letter in the copy of this letter okay so uh i want to see the result at the end of this uh, at the end of this week so could we solve this problem with the schedule or not? If we could solve this with the study office, I will send or I will go to the study office by myself, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. I think nobody has seminar scheduled yet. Yes, but uh, in my schedule and in the schedule of other students, I will see them. So. This is very interesting point. Okay, uh, and the question from Ivan. Can I ask like a question? Do you have like the schedule of all the seminars for all groups? Я вижу расписание всех групп, да. Ага. А вы можете тогда подсказать хотя бы время семинара 206 группы, просто чтобы мы знали, если появится, не появится, чтобы мы примерно хотя бы понимали, когда нам надо быть в университете? Давайте, да, я я посмотрю и вам вечером напишу. Да, спасибо большое. So the question from Ivan: There is no point in aftermath. We don't have an exam. There is no point in aftermath. There is no point in aftermath, uh, but all you can see uh, how current you can see here the current form of creating. OK. So see you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye bye. Mm -hmm, bye, -bye.